Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Alonzo Richardson, and I am your host of a new Focus podcast, okay. which is a Bible study podcast, which will help enrich your life. And I want to do a special interview today with a good friend of mine. Um, I know him for several years now, and he's very uh, informative. He's funny. He is a great worker for the kingdom of God. And um, without any further ado, and also he is one of four hosts on the Diplomat podcast. And without any further ado, I want to introduce to you all Eric Cummins Jr. Thanks for uh, joining me, Eric. My pleasure, my pleasure. You you made me sound good for a second. I was like, who, who are we talking about? Like, it's your old lady. <laughs> Look, we, we got to, you know, we got to hype our friends up. You know what I'm saying? We got to hype our people up. You know what I'm saying? You right. You, can't, right. you know, I can't do do a lazy introduction for, for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I felt so it. So, right. you doing that type of introduction means something. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it. You know, I should put my all into it, you know. Listen, that's why they pay you the big bucks. Woo. I don't know who told you that line, but I wish. But what I hear that uh, you know, the diplomats podcast, they've been getting uh rolling in the big dough. With all uh, the I, telling you, so, you uh, know, we man. we trying our best, you know. We you know you gotta put into what if you want to get something out of it. So, you know, right now we're putting a lot in. Um it's fun so far. So I'll just say that it's fun so far. All right, all right, all right. hey. And look, it sounds like you guys having a good time too. So that's what makes the podcast really, uh, really, really good. Um, so for those that don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh man, a little bit about myself. A little bit about myself. Um, well, like you said before, my name is Eric, uh, Eric Cummings Jr. Um, I am born and raised in Chicago. Um. Yeah, man, I just turned 30 like a few weeks ago. So, you know, praise God for that. It's been fun. You know, I, I still, you know, I still feel young after 30. You know, people told me it was going to be something totally different. But, you know, I still feel like I got my 20-year-old body. And, you know, I could just get out there. And then when I turn around and think about it, it's like, nah, I could just go take a nap, <laughs> call it a day, you know. So, um, yeah, I graduated from Grambling State University in 20 fall of 2012 with my bachelor's degree in um, mass communication concentrated in public relations um after that i came back to chicago i uh, was looking for a job and i ended up at a what is it called a community center uh, called crew in the city agape center crew in the city so that is where i am currently now as a second year intern cool 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 that's what's up man that's what's up um, before we, um, well, before we talk about crew, um, I think the first time, uh, I met you was at the national convention for the church of Christ holiness USA, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, I thought, you know, I seemed like a cool guy. So from then on, um, you yeah, look, I got to make friends with the guy. He seemed like a cool guy. And of course, uh, our friendship built since then. And uh, you are I, one thing I always appreciate about you is you always uh, encourage me. You always push me to um, do what I want to do, you know, do the things that will first, you know, make God look good, first and foremost. And secondly, you know, push me to do things that will help others, too. Hmm. I just want to let you know, I, I definitely appreciate that. So, Oh, my pleasure, man. I. Dang, man, you made me feel <laughs> I need some tissue real quick because I didn't think I was going to. But um, all glory go to God, man. It's like you said, I'm not. I'm just going to build you up because I know that's what God wants us to do. Build each other up. So I thank you for the compliment. But I mean, that's all praise go to God. Amen. 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 Now. Since I mentioned up Church of Christ Holiness USA, what's one good memory? I know it's a lot, 
But what's one good memory you can share um, that you have being at the, you know, or national convention or any other uh, conference? Oh, man. Dang, why are you going? Dang. Oh, I got to pick one. I got to pick one. Okay. Um, The one I was just talking to. Or, or a few. Pick a few. Oh, okay. So the one that came out to my head the most that I could think of because I was just talking to my mother about it. Uh, it was in a national convention in Atlanta. I think it was the first time we was in Atlanta. And I can't think of his name, but he was he used to work with Ty Tribbett. And I it was a great worship time. Uh the song was What Would I Do? Like, what should I do? What could I do without you, Lord? So that that started off my night. I was like, okay, cool. But oh Jimmy uh Scriven. Yes, yes. So um towards the end, like it just straight turned into a worship night. And I'm like, mm-hmm. sometimes it's like, we just, I know there's structure, it's things we got to get done. But at the same time, I was like, bro, we just went into straight praise and worship. And I said, this is all I wanted. I was like, this was, this was great. Mm-hmm. So that was one of my favorite memories. Um, Then I can push it back all the way to 2008 when we had our um, young adult conference. And we went, we was in Atlanta again. Wow. Mm-hmm. I must love Atlanta. That's what I, I'm just going to say that. Shout out to all the people in Atlanta. I, I love it down there. Um, but that's when I went to Stone Mountain and I climbed, I think that was the first time I ever climbed a mountain. And it was, it was a great experience. Um, just even I've noticed like when I was climbing a mountain, it's like you start off with certain people and then like you keep on traveling and then you meet up with other people and like you can encourage them to keep on going. Like we can make this, we can make this. And it's like, man, it's like, this is like, I mean, not to just like spiritualize it, but like it was like a journey. Like this is your walk with Christ. Sometimes, like you might start off with the same people, but I mean, like everybody's going at different paths, different different routes, different speeds. But at this end of the day, we're still going to the same destination, or we're still striving to get to the same destination. Yeah. So that is my second one. I, who I can't think of a third one right now. But those two, I would say those two are my top two. Man, that that uh, climbing the mountain thing you just said, it it, it can preach. It can preach right there. Oh no, it can not. preach right there, Doc. <laughs> I ain't no preacher. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh man, you know what? I want to echo echo uh, a couple of memories I can think of is the one in Atlanta, the same one uh, you was referring to. Uh, that worship night kind of set the point of expecting great things for that weekend mm-hmm. and then that saturday night it went to full blown out after that service when full blown out worship it was a praise praise break then worship i thought that was an awesome uh uh time and then as one recently was the youth conference in 2017 i think that really um definitely opened my eyes to what I guess for personally, what I need to do, my calling, I guess, and then also seeing young people worshiping God. You know, um, I was supposed to present at one of the sessions, and I was, you know, go, well, actually, it was one of the, with the young ladies. And at that time, um, the presenter, uh, Bree Bowman, uh was presented to young ladies and it was just full blown out like healing and just deliverance and all that happening you know in that uh session so those two at least those two i could think of were uh great memories that i have so yeah i remember that's man i couldn't remember what year it was but i do remember that conference like even I remember, I think for the, it was the young adults and they say grab like two people's numbers that's around this campfire. And it was one guy named Donovan Jenkins. And mm. I always saw him around, but you know how you regularly be like, hey, like, hey, like we're at the same conference, what's up? You know, but I never like said anything to him. But that conference, like we actually like 
exchange numbers and like that's that's my boy like that's my brother like we hit up each other like almost all the time like I whenever I get to Cali I try to hit him up visit him so I really appreciate like that conference when I think back at when I think back to it yeah shout out to uh Donovan that's my boy also that's my boy right there he's doing big things in uh California man you know that yeah like I said that weekend was just mind-blowing to me mind-blowing so thank you for that thank you for that um I want to um ask you about crew if you could tell me a little bit about crew and what you do in the uh, crew thank uh so crew um crew started off back in UCLA back in 1959 on the campus of UCLA and it was just a ministry that focused on like working with college kids like college students like sharing the gospel with them but over the years they started to branch out to like different parts of like the world and stuff like this crew military this crew high school there's crew um elementary um it's a lot of a lot of different like branches of crew, but I work under the branch of Crew Inner City. So Crew Inner City, we focus on helping the churches, um, building the church, like helping the homeless. Like we're, our heart is for the poor. And so we try to mobilize and serve the churches that are like focusing on this. Okay. Do you feel as if, how can I say this? I'm, I don't want to get in trouble, but you ain't going to get in trouble. <laughs> Do you feel as if, you know, and that's a really great thing. I think that's really piv pivotal for us right now to have outreach outside the four walls. Uh -oh. You know, great that they come in. That's awesome that they come in the four walls, but also to, to be an impact outside. Mm. You know, and to actually minister to the people, you know, yes, it's, I know it's one thing to give out things, you know, and that's what my church do. We usually give out laundry detergent every spring, spring okay, to help our neighbors out, you know, and then we also leave a little, um, um, I can't think of it, track on the, uh, you know, detergents or bleach, you know, to minister to them. Mm -hmm. Then it's another thing to actually just establish a relationship with them you know and to actually speak into their lives you know and i think that's what i like about uh what you're doing in crew um and you says is it it started in uh, la what other cities uh does crew operate man uh it's kind of bad that i don't know the exact number but um uh, crew campus is like it's in most of your major campus any campus you could think of i know from the west coast to the east coast down south up north we're even overseas so i mean it's just not in the states but we're trying to reach like overseas i don't know if you ever heard of jesus film um it's a film that's been translated into like 1200 different languages right now that came from crew so their their main focus is like sharing the gospels overseas but i know for crew in the city we're in 14 different cities right now. Um, dang, I wish I could name them all, but I could say a few. Uh, you got Los Angeles, Chicago, Atlanta, New York, Milwaukee. Um, oh, man. Uh, Detroit, Dallas. Like, we're all over the place. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And I noticed that you also do uh, videos uh, for crew. Can you tell yeah. me a little bit about that? Oh, man. So um, so we have these things called macro ministry and micro ministry. And so our macro ministries are focusing on like something what you did with their um, church as like passing out uh, laundry detergent. So what we do, we have four macro ministries. One is in February. You no, know, one is in November where we're passing out um, boxes of love. We pack up boxes for, um, we pack up turkeys. We pack up canned goods. We give away like gospel material and we have the churches, our partners come partner with us and like make these boxes. And then they turn around, take these boxes to people that they know they're not believers. So they're sharing these, this food and they're getting fed physically and spiritually. 
And so we do the same thing around Easter. We have, a, um, it's called an Easter bag to where we pack up candy and gospel tracks for the kids. We have power packs where we pack up book bags over the summer. And then we have one in the wintertime that we call homeless care kits to where we're packing up like sheets, blankets, toiletries, anything we think that uh, someone that is homeless could use. So that's like our macro things, macro ministry, but our micro is like what we focus on more or what we're passionate about more. Uh, with me, I work well with younger children. So I work with this after school program called Say Yes, and Say Yes stands for Saving America's Youth. Um, it started out in New York and California during the uh, LA riots. Like they was telling kids like, hey, you say no to this, say no to that. But somebody came up like, well, we're telling these kids to say no to everything, but they need something to say yes to. So mm -hmm. that's how yeah. Say Yes came about. And so I work with the first through fourth graders. And recently, the videos you're talking about, um, since um, COVID-19 is going on right now, we're unable to minister to the kids, like be in the same room with them. But this is also a perfect time to figure out like how we can minister to children different ways. So um, my co-leader and I, uh, we decided like, hey, these kids love being on YouTube. Like these kids love being on some type of screen. So let's meet them where they're at. And so we created something called Resurrection Egg videos to where like every egg had a different part of Jesus' story of his resurrection. So that was the 12 videos that we've done so far. And we are actually working on some starting tomorrow. So stay tuned for that also. Cool, cool, cool. And I definitely will uh, provide some links for everybody. Um, for that um, in the description box. Awesome. Um, with, and I, you just answered my question. I said with the COVID-19 is going on, and like you said, you're reaching to them with YouTube and with other um, social media platforms. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good, uh, um, how can I say that? A really good uh, idea to have because, you know, like you said, you know, yes, we can tell them not to do certain things, but we also need to uh, um, inform them what to do, the good things that they can do. Mm -hmm. And um, you're, you know, that's really a good um, idea to do that. Um, and uh, one thing also, I remember you did a presentation at one of the national conventions and you had a couple of items for us to um, minister to people that don't know the gospel. Uh, I know one of them was a wristband um, telling certain things. And then the other is uh, five, I think five beads, five different color beads to kind of tell the, the gospel story, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I think that's very, um, very, very uh, helpful for us. For, for those that are not, um, that are more introvert, an extra extrovert you know uh can you tell me i don't know you probably you may may not remember do you mind telling me a little tell us a little bit about those the wristband and the uh, beads oh man i wish i came prepared because i you know what i might be prepared but um yes you are talking about the gospel beads um it's for children oh look at that i got one right in my back oh oh look at me being prepared so i can uh, run us through it run us through it real quick. So these are made for like children, like, cause you know, we know that kids are more like, they're concrete and not abstract. So they need to see to like actually understand what they're learning. So we always had like, this one's a little special because this one's for like the Hispanic community. But um, usually the yellow one stands for God loves us. He's bright like the sun, so God loves us. This one is supposed to be blue but they made it clear with sparkly. Um, but when it's blue, um, God, the yellow one is saying God loves us so much that he gave his only son. But the blue one, let's pretend it's blue. Uh, the blue one uh, said that sin came into the world and sin makes God sad. So now that sin is in the world, we are separated from God. And so, but I tell the kids like, but you got to remember that God loved us so much, but he did something. Like he sacrificed his son. Jesus shed his blood to die for our sins. 
And now that he died for our sins, we are all clear. We are all clean. And now that God has did that for us, now we get to grow in Christ. And when you think of green, you think of something outside that's green, you think of grass. And what does grass do? It doesn't just stay down. It, like, it grows up. So we have to grow in Christ. So this is one, one way we minister to children, how we share the gospel with them. And then the other one is we call it the four bracelet. So it's kind of like that, but it's like really quick and condensed. Um, the, it's four symbols. There's a heart. There's a division sign. There's a cross. And then there's a question mark. So the heart, same thing here. God loves us. But the division sign, we were divided by God because of sin. But it didn't just stay here. God sent his son to die on the cross for us. And so you just elaborate on all three of those. And then the fourth one is, what are you going to do with this information? Like, are you going to accept them as your Lord and Savior? Are you just going to let this in your head and don't do nothing about it? Don't make, just keep your head knowledge and not like form with your heart. Like that was, that's the four bracelets. So I usually try to use the four bracelet on people that's older. Um, but the kids, they love the bracelets and then they, they get to wear it. Like they get to keep the bracelet and they get to wear it and they get to share it with their friends. So it's like they're, after you share the gospel with them, they're able to use their wristband to show it the same way that they just was shared with to them. Wow. Awesome. That's awesome, man. And when I, like I said, when I saw that, that amazed me, amazed me, like, you know, there's other ways to, present the gospel you know yes you know of course you want to bring them to church and you know and the preacher would preach about the gospel but you broke it that you broke it down to where it's simple it's simple it's not complex hmm. you know so i think that's what those brace that bracelet and uh, the uh, beads and the wristband will help out a lot um so you know thank you for uh telling uh telling us about what you're doing crew i think that the work is doing you're doing is excellent oh, and i just pray you continue on and and god give you strength to uh continue to minister to people through that um so then uh, i want to move on to to the diplomats podcast <laughs> uh personally i love the podcast it's like i said it's very diverse it's funny it's informative. Um, you gotta get some. Uh, I, and tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. I, I think I heard one of the hosts said they y'all love God, right? But we love. Him. We can be a little ratchet. So am yeah, I, am I am I correct on that? You are hundred percent correct. A <laughs> hundred. So uh, I mean. We all met each other through church. Like we all went to the same church. Um, it was a Kochusha church at that. Um, but you know, we love God. And you know, but you know, sometimes you gotta get a little ratchet for them. Like, you know, sometimes uh -huh. people don't understand it when you're just playing with them. And you know, you gotta get a little ratch from time to time. Um well. but I I mean, I love them so much and I just love that we're able to come together on this podcast. And like you said, there's like different perspective. I mean, two women two women, two men, um, older, younger, married, not. So it's like you get so many different perspectives and then you even get like a biblical perspective also. And I mean, what's great is like, we always bring up like topics that wasn't shared at church. Like you could not talk about it at church. Like yeah. it was like one of those things like, whoa, like are they even saying, like you could say that word in church. Isn't that like a, a curse word in church? It's like, no, like it's life. Like it's something we go yeah. through. And it's like, we've been so misinformed at church and like people are hurt and like struggling. And it's like, they come to church, but they can't talk about it because they don't know how to talk about it or they feel like they're going to be judged for talking about it. And so, I mean, this is what this podcast is for. Like, we just want to share like our experience, what we've been through, um, what people might be going through. Like, and we still want to, we still coming from a church background, church perspective. Like we're doing it for the culture. Like we're doing pop culture. We talk about how COVID-19 is affecting us now. It's like, there is still like the biblical aspect, but you know, we're still human. Like 
we still have to, I mean, we're Christians. All four of us are Christians, but it's like, you still, you still who you are. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's been a great ride so far. We are on five episodes so far. So, you know, I'm just ready to get rich and get famous, you know, and just put everybody on. That's all I'm saying, you know. I'm still hey, trying to keep the job, but you know, I, you know, I'm still trying to do this podcast too. Yeah, yeah. It's just, just don't forget about me when you when you get rich, man. That's all. Man, I'm. I, listen, we already shouted you out once, bro. You know, you already on the rotation of the shout outs, man. Okay. You already know. You already know. <laughs> and uh, and of course, uh, you know, I shouted you guys out uh, on mine also, because like, you, like I said, really, y'all should really listen to their podcast. You know, and Eric brought up a good point that some subjects that that they are talking about, we don't always talk about in church. Hmm. You know, for some, it's not. For some, it's on purpose. For some, you know, they may not know, they, or but they may not. They they probably don't know how to approach the issues. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, I think that platform can provide provide a good conversation on certain issues that are, you know, that can be taboo for some people, you know, you know, and, and you talk about certain things. Oh my goodness. Why, why would you say, like you said, like it's a curse word or something. Yeah. Now, why are you talking about that? Wait, I'm like, that's what's happening in our lives. You know, we can't, we can't, um, duck it, you know, duck and dodging, you know, all our lives, you know, and, and- we have to talk about it. Yeah. I just want to say, like, us ducking it sometimes or ducking away from it, people walk away from the church because of that. Yeah. And it's like, we want people to come to church because, mm-hmm. you know, like, Christ is the answer. But it's like, if you're not, like, sharing, like, your experience with people, people, you might come off to people like, oh, you're holier than now. And it's like, no, I'm struggling too, but yeah. I'm not showing it, which is wrong. Like, you have to. And I think that's what's wrong with mm, who I. You know what I ain't. Not to know. Yeah. Not to play uh, okay. You know. Who? I'm a. I'm a. This show. show. This show. Show. Cause, cause we can we can go there, Doc. We can go there. No, but uh, no, 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 no. But I'm back. But yeah, I I I definitely get what you're saying. Though. You know, we for us to be for us to have full healing, we need to be fully transparent. You went there, but uh, you know, hey, you know, they can um, they can take it or leave it, but it's the truth. You know, as you like you said, which bring up a good point. If we don't talk about it, then we're gonna have people leaving the church, and then go elsewhere. Hmm. You know, and try to find some other form of healing. You know, that's not good. You know, so. Ooh, you about to get me riled up for a second. Okay. Anyway, uh, but thank you for uh talking about that. Like I said, y'all, please, please support that podcast. Please support that podcast. I really, really love it. So before we go, I want to ask you, since this is a Bible study podcast, you know, and two more questions I want to ask you. And um, before we go, how does the Bible I don't know if I'm asking this right, but how does the Bible apply to your life? Oh, hmm. well, how can I put this? It's my guide. Like it's, it's how I want to live my life. Um, just sharing a little bit of my testimony. Uh, I grew up in a church, you know, from, I was born in 1990, but I've been going to church since 1989 before I popped out the womb. So all I knew was church. So, you know, I was a good kid. Like, you know, I did everything. I was on the usher board. I was in the choir. I did whatever you wanted me to do. But I think it was later in my years when I found out like, man, if I was to go to heaven and get to heaven's gate and they would ask me, like, why should I let you in? They, I would say I'm a good guy. Like, I know God. But it's like, no. 
no, nah, bro. Like you never formed that relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus. Like I knew it up here, but I wasn't following it here. Mm-hmm. And so after that, like hit me after like a few years ago, I was like, dang, like I really need to like, if I'm going to say I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus and I want to have like a relationship with God. Like I had to build on it. And the only way you build on something is like spending time with somebody. And I know if you spend the time with somebody, you got to like, you got to like have a long time. You got to talk to them. But like people like don't understand, like when you want a long time with God or how you talk to Jesus is like, you got to read his word. Like God is like, Jesus is all through the Bible. I don't, I know we physically see him in the North in the, uh, what is it called the new Testament, but he's there in the old Testament all the way throughout. Yeah. And it's like, we have to read our word to like build our relationship with Christ. And so, you know, I try to like, I'm not perfect and I'm, I struggle every day. It's a struggle every day, but I try to read my word every morning, do a devotion and, you know, just listen through the word throughout the day. There's a cool app that I use called uh, Street Lights. Um, listening to the Bible with music behind it is not no like clap. Ain't nothing wrong with classical music, but you know, I need something upbeat. And so I listen to it to like a hip hop beat behind it. So it's like listening to the gospels, like hearing hip hop behind it. It's like you hear the word and you hear the music and it like it sinks in and then like you meditate on the word. So I try to live, I try to live by the Bible every day. Like I try to read every day. Like I don't beat myself up when I miss the day, but I know that I have to get back into it because if I don't read my word, my word, and I stray from it, I start to feel it. And I start to see it in my life. Like I get angry and I'm like, why am I mad right now? Like, why are this little thing making me mad right now? And it's like, dang, it's like, I'm not back to the usual. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to God, like, hey God, I need you right now. It's like, bro, you're not, but you're not coming to me. So it's like actually doing a prayer life, like actually sitting down and reading my word and studying the word. So that's just that's what the bible is for me it was like it's a guide i have to use it to like get me through the not get me through the day but get me through life man amen thank you thank you definitely and i want to uh, ask one more question is there any uh verses that encourage you that you can tell everybody and so they can possibly use it in, in their lives also oh yes I got two. Can I can I share both of them? Or yeah, most definitely. So, um, just a little bit of background on why I picked this favorite verse. Why wow, this is my favorite verses. Um, 2016, I donated my kidney to my father, and you know it was a long process. You know, thank God it was only six months. Usually, when you go through a process like that, it's up to like one or two years. But ours, by the grace of God, it was only six 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 months but um the day the night before like i'm good all the way up until the night before and i'm getting nervous and i'm like you know what this could not work (laughs) and it's like i even had a friend he was i was talking to a friend one day and he was bruh the words that came out of his mouth like really threw me off he was like man he said that was me i wouldn't do it like i wouldn't do it for my father and i'm like like bro wait what he said, yeah, my father hits, my father lived his life. Da, da, da. I was like, bro, like just to see his mindset about it. I was like, that's totally not me. But it's like, I let that sink in my head for a second. I'm like, man, like, should I really be doing this? Like I can, like, they gave you the option, like to stop. You, you can decide all the way up until the surgery and say like, I don't want to do this. And I was like, no, like, why would somebody even do that? Like, I'm not thinking like that, but I was reading my Bible and it's Psalms 56 um, verses. I'm just going to read like the first few verses, but um, said, be gracious to me. Oh God, for man tramples me. He fights and oppresses me all day long. My adversaries trample me all day for me, for many arrogantly fight against me. So this is the verse, verse three. uh, When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not fear. What can man do to me? So I read that and I'm like, 
bro, we can do this surgery now. Like, <laughs> I know that Yo. you got me, Lord. Like, I yeah. even woke up the next day, like, bro, let's do this. My mother was like, calm, like, calm down. I was like, no, nah. like, put me under, take this kidney, do what you got to do, because yeah. I'm ready. Um, like, I was like, all the fear was gone. So it's like, that one got me through all the time. Um, but there's another one. I, I never say this name right. And Laura's still working on me how to talk to and how to speak. I think it's Abaka. Have that, have that. Okay. Have that. You, you, yeah, you, you're good. Yeah. That, that first, yeah. That first one. Right the first time? Yeah. Bro, that, that ain't usual. That ain't. <laughs> I usually be saying Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Habakkuk. You know, it's it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> it's a Bruh. little bit of everything. So that's why I'm, that's another one of my favorite. It's just the background. He's talking to a guy right now. Like, I think. Uh, it was an army going against him, and it was like he did not. He was like going back and forth with God. It's only three three chapters, and like the first one, he's talking about how like he's like praying to God, like talking to him, like Lord, I don't understand why all this is going on. Then God came back and answered him, said like This is why I'm going to settle that. Da, da da da. He came right back, and he's talking like God. I don't. I still don't understand. Like this is going on. That's going on, and God came right back, said something to him, but the last few verses he like finally understood and like you know what i'm gonna just i'm gonna just follow and it's like the verses of habakkuk 3 17 through 19 it says through the though the fig tree should not blossom nor fruit be on the vines the produce of the olive fall and the fields yield no food the flock be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stall and just this, these next four words just just rocked my world. He said, yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. So even like COVID-19, when I think about it right now, like people understand like, it's crazy out here. And it's like, yep. people don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. Like, they don't know what their next move. I mean, like, stocks are dropping. Like, things are happening. And it's like, while all of this is happening, I'm still going to rejoice. Yet I will still rejoice. Because I think about our new normal. Um, people, like, I feel like this is like the cry that God has, like God is finally like getting our attention. Like for years, you know, he did it subtle. Like he was, he was like, Hey, like, come to me. I'm here. Come back. But now it's like, I, you are going through this and I want you to see that I am, <laughs> I am still God. And it's like, all of this is happening. And it's like, man, like I can be like going crazy or upset or scared or worried but just those three words i said four but three words yet i will mm. like as everything is still going on yet i will like covid is still happening right now the world is like experiencing something it never has in its entire entire life the entire world we never experienced this but yet i will rejoice in the lord and so that verse has been so powerful to me. So that's, I recommend people to read that book, that whole book from front to back, like, and study it just to see how he changed from complaining about these people to turn around and saying, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's kind of hard to uh, follow. Um, <laughs> I just I feel like he was you was preaching a little bit. Whoa. I want to say, come on, preacher. Whoa, whoa, whoa. come on. Listen, <laughs> I ain't a preacher. I ain't a preacher. Come on, Doc. If I had a towel, I would have thrown it at you. That's all. <laughs> That's all. That's all. But uh, you you made a good point with awesome awesome point and great verses too. We have to make the decision on our own 
whether to lie in our worrying, you know, lie in our anxiety, or make the decision to rejoice in the Lord. Mm. You know, and once we make that decision to rejoice in the Lord, He given us strength. First of our focus is first and foremost on Him and not on ourselves. You know, and we're just giving Him praise for the things that He's already done, but also what He will do. Mm. And and for who he is. And that's why we want to make that decision to rejoice in him. Eric, this has been a great interview. You this is my this is actually the, my first interview on a new focus podcast. <laughs> and uh I just I just <laughs> Miller Rock the two of the Okay, anyway, oh. um that's it's not that, oh. that type of show. I, I understand, <laughs> I understand uh um, you know, I'm I'm saved, and um, no, I'm, just, I'm just playing. I'm, just playing. <laughs> I'm saved too, but I'm a little rat. That's all I'm saying. I'm a little rat. <laughs> a little rat, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I have to, I will. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, yeah. man, uh, you knock, I'll buck. That's all I'm saying. What? Now, look, woo, you, if you, you ain't knocking the bucket. Wow! 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 Whew. See, you you wrote see something rose in me when you said knuck if you knuck if you buck because you know back in my pre as you know I, some folks might not know I'm a deacon so in my pre digging days okay let me let me stop let me listen, stop listen let me stop but uh I'm just saying sometimes thing. in your deacon days if well, somebody well, gets, well, I mean you know if they I gonna mean, knock. They better uh, know you gonna buck. Well, because you know, I, I've been tested recently on that, but you know, I'm hey, you know, that's an, that's that's part of my testimony. Okay, he's right. working on me on that. Yo. God's still working on me. I ain't trying to start nothing, but what? won't start no. Mm. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I just my podcast just went from clean into not to clean. <laughs> I'll just play. <laughs> oh man. Uh Eric, man, thank you so much for doing this. I just appreciate um you taking the time out to do this interview. And I know this this interview will be impacting impacting a lot of people's lives. I just pray and believe that uh, when we broadcast it out. So Thank you so much, Eric. And uh, hope, And if y'all haven't, you know, like I said, if y'all haven't yet, please subscribe to the Diplomats podcast and please give them a listen. Yeah, um, I just want to say much love, bro. I mean, I'm I'm thankful for you. I'm glad you're doing this. Uh, like I said, just keep pushing through. Like you got this, bro. Like you, I'm glad I could be a part of this journey with you. Um, but like he said, yeah, you can follow us on um, Instagram at the Diplomat Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, the Diplomats Podcast, the Diplomats with a apostrophe S podcast. And then we just launched YouTube, like I said, um, the Diplomats Podcast again. So we out you. And I mean, you can listen to us on uh, Apple Music. You can listen to us on Spotify. Also, you can listen to us on Buzzsprout. So just type in the Diplomat Podcast and you should be able to find us. Um, if you want to follow me personally on Facebook or Instagram, Eric Cummings Jr. on Facebook, and then I'm just Eric Butt underscore. Uh, yeah, but underscore. I might change my name, but for now, I'm going to keep it the same. So, yeah, it's been a pleasure, um, Zoe. I'm glad. And I just can't wait till next time. Oh, there will be. There will be a next time for you, my friend. Cool. Trust cool. and believe. You know, wait till I get a little bit more famous. Then I'll, no, I'll just play. I'm just playing with you. Listen, just, just give me $5. That's all Bro, I want. I got you. You know I got you. I'll send it through Cash App. Do that. I need a receipt. So that says, like, I got it from him. So that's all I need. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good one. Thank you. God bless. Peace.